Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two, the user manual for the second half of your life. And of course, Art Kirsch and I are here with John Mariani, the virtual gourmet, uh, premier food and travel writer, and the publisher of the Virtual Gourmet Weekly Newsletter, which, by the way, is free. John, good to see you again. You too, guys. Well, well you know, COVID, sometimes you just like to hog the spotlight, okay? But you forgot some stuff. First of all, the Virtual Gourmet appears at johnmariana.com, which I encourage everybody to go to, if for no other reason than to look at the delicious plates of food that populate every single issue. It's just Very a delight to, to look at them. It's like a coffee table book uh, on the internet. Uh, John's also well, written a I what? Mention that because um, I think that the graphics, which I do, mm -hmm. which are pulled from thousands of sources, um, I try to make them fun. I try to make them informative. And I'm very, I'm not very proud of the way the virtual gourmet looks. For you, yes, you should be. Yeah. But beyond, beyond the virtual gourmet, uh, the newsletter and the fact that you're uh, internationally uh, uh, traveled and a report on the food and food related items and wines, is that you've also written a dozen books, uh, uh, some technical like encyclopedias, other, and people can just go to Amazon and put in John Mariani and you'll, you'll see those books there. But you've also written a number of novels, uh, a romantic uh, novel, recently that appear, that have been appearing online. And that's where I want to get to today is that one that I am overwhelmingly enjoying is about uh, a fellow named Harry Lyme. Uh, and um, uh, it's caused me to do a lot of research uh, on this. And you know, it's quite appropriate that there were three men here. And I, I don't know who's the third man, but uh, who was Harry Lyme? What inspired that uh, story? <laughs> Uh, you know, just casting about, the novels I've written have been of different sorts. One was a romance novel, which kind of mm. came just for love and pizza. And I, want, I wanted to know if I could write a woman character well. And so I did that. And then the Capone's Gold, which was my first mystery novel with the same two um, uh, protagonists, uh, Katie Cavuto and uh, David Greco, um, that uh, that came to me just driving in a car when I was in Sicily, and I said, Capone's gold. Whatever happened to Capone's gold? And I won't say what did. Um, the second one was called Another Vermeer, which was about a Jan Vermeer painting showing up in the art market, and there's only 35 known to exist, and that was the second one. So I was looking at the art um, industry there. So, the, And the third one, and I said, okay, I wrote about art, so let me do more literary or movie-centered one. So I've always been fascinated by The Third Man, the movie. Great movie, directed yeah. by Carol Reed, um, starred in by Joseph Cotton as an American who goes to find out, or just basically to go to the funeral of an old friend named Harry Lyme. And um, it turns out that Harry's alive. Um, and it was written by Graham Greene, first as a movie script, uh, for the for uh, Carol Reed, and then he wrote an accompanying book, uh, which uh, came out, which was a very very little change from the movie script, and they're both uh, just uh, marvelous. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, not spy novel, uh, kind of. It takes place in Vienna, and um, Harry Lyme is a man who has enormous charm. Uh, as Orson Welles does in the movie, but uh, also is a person who, right after the war, when this novel took place, uh, this movie took place uh, in Vienna, uh, when they had the Russian zone, they had the American zone, French zone, British zone, that Harry was selling bad penicillin to hospitals and children were dying of it. So he's kind of a monstrous man um, in one sense, but he's still... Joseph Cotton's friend. Um, so and, and they, the most famous scene is they meet in the carousel uh, in Vienna, which is still there. And um, uh, he says, how, you know, how can you do this? And he says, you know, after the, the, the butchery of, of the uh, of World War Two, we just came out of and what you're doing. And and uh, first 
Lime says, uh, well, he says, look at those people down on the ground there. They're up on the carousel. He says, would you, does anybody care if any one of them would just drop dead right now? They're just little ants down there. And then he makes uh, a comment, which Orson Welles wrote into the script, uh, which is not in the original script. And he says, consider the Renaissance. In the Renaissance was full of butchery and bloodshed and torture. And what did it produce? Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael. Switzerland had 500 years of social democracy. And what did it produce? The cuckoo clock. Goodbye. <laughs> and yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a great line. So what does this have to do with my novel? Well, I've always been intrigued if Graham Greene, a great British novelist, um, was who was in MI6, the British spy agency, which um, James Bond was in. He was in MI6 during the war, and he knew <clears throat> uh, many people in the shadowy spy business, um, one of whom was a guy named Kim Philby. And Kim Philby was a turncoat, a counter agent. And he was uh, throughout the war, he was working for the Russians, and throughout the war, and then after the war uh, as well, and because he was not so much high born, he was not a Lord Kim Philby, but he was one of these James Bond types. Everybody loved him. Everybody trusted him. And he wasn't found out until, I don't know what it was, 1952, 1953, which became an enormous scandal, by which time he had escaped into Russia. Um, and uh, it was said to die uh, some years later and was buried somewhere in a grave in Russia. Uh, end of story, one would think, but it is interesting. Did Graham Greene have Kim Philby in mind when he wrote The Third Man, or was it somebody else? So I said, that's a good plot. So my two protagonists, my two heroes, David and Katie, She's a, an investigative reporter, and he's an ex-New uh, York uh, PD detective. Um, they try to find out more. They read everything they can about uh, Kim Philby and, 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 and Graham Greene and Alexander Korda, the producer, and how the movie was me made. And they decide they really should go to Vienna and see what, uh, they, what kind of leads they can pick up there and see the sewer, the great scene at the end of uh, The Third Man where... Lime is racing through the sewers, being chased by the uh, by the British police, and uh, at the very end, well, I won't spoil the movie, but it's a great movie with great zither music. If you love zither music, this is the movie for you. Yes, famous, uh, famous Sam. Yeah, and uh, in in preparation for this book, I went to Vienna and um, saw the sewers. They're going kind to of blocked off now. You can't really go in them and um, stole the Ferris wheel and stayed at the soccer hotel Holly Martin stays and uh, and every one of the scenes in the movie which was filmed right after World War II so you still see some rubble from the war um, uh, but all of the scenes are placed in those locations which still exist for Harry oh first first shows up and as I said the soccer hotel and so forth so that was a lot of fun so I won't say anything more uh, except that with as with any good crime novel and I hope this is a good one there are some twists there are some turns there are some red herrings that you will follow that turn out to be wrong and um, see if they find Harry Lyme or whoever they find uh, might have committed a crime that inspired uh, Mr. Graham Greene to write the book. So again, it's it's on it's on my virtual gourmet. It's being serialized. So it's in chapter four now, but you can read all of them. You can go back to the archive. All anybody has to do is go to www.johnmariani.com. No dot after John, just John Mariani is one word. Dot com. Sign yourself up and your ten thousand closest friends, and I think you'll enjoy it immensely. Um, it ends up going to several countries, um, talking about several places to eat and uh, where they stay, which I also like to always like to filter through my books. Yeah. Uh, but it's always about, and if they're eating a restaurant, if they're eating a certain food at a restaurant in my books, uh, I've eaten there and I've eaten yep. that dish. And it's in a real restaurant. I, I love the way you weave into your um, 
novels, uh, your actual travels and your actual mm -hmm. uh, restaurant reviews and hotel experiences and things like that. It, it's uh, what are the verisimilitude. <laughs> it is. I mean, it's the type of thing. If I were a full-time novelist, crime novelist, I could just say, you know, I'm going to fly to Bangkok uh, yeah. and write it off my taxes. Um, right. <laughs> it would be uh, nice to be able to do that. But I have been to these places, so I haven't written any novels about places I have not been myself. And I kind of next novel, I think. Well, where, where are we I have one coming up in Dublin. I know that well. We've got one coming up in Paris. So that's a really good one. And I have one coming up uh, in various other places. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And what's also important is that when I was a kid, anything I know about crime novels is not from Sherlock Holmes. It's from Tom Swift Jr. Really, teen-year-old scientist who <laughs> three. 30 books when I was 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, 13 years old, in the mid 50s. And they always started identifying the characters exactly the same way. You, so you felt comfortable with that. Who is Tom and who is Ted Barkley, his, his good friend and his father and so forth. And then every chapter ended with a kind of cliffhanger. Basically blown up by the Brogdigians or something. And, I learned about a great deal about pacing and also that every one of the volumes of Tom Swift I read, there were the same characters. They had this silly Texas cook. He always shows up yeah. you know, at some point. Uh, and people who had been working, let's say, for the FBI, they always show up at a certain point. And uh, the last couple of pages are always the same. Well, he always said, well, we've, we, we, we uh, got to the moon. Now what's next, Tom? Tom yeah. did not know that his next was going to be an undersea. <laughs> I learned everything I know about crime novels from Tom Swift. I've also read Elmore Leonard with with great uh, uh, great delight. Um, Ross McDonald does not really impress me. Um, um, of course, um, uh, uh, Agatha Christie is a certain kind of mystery where everybody shows up in the sure. lab in the drawing room with the six suspects, and it's yeah. always the same ending. Um, but uh, whether it's death on the Nile or or whatever. well, you know, you mention um, the same characters that you utilize the same characters, Katie and David, and they're very engaging characters. You've created a great. Um, of course, your first introduction to them was kind of a romance, and that was a lot of fun, eating their way through through Europe, <laughs> as I recall. Um, but now they're they're on the hunt, and yeah. it's it's a it just reminds me of, uh, um, there's a lot of great examples, but the one that comes to mind now is Mr. and Mrs. North. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you remember that old TV show. Um, at any rate, that they're yeah. a great pair. They're great characters. And uh, you've, you've made a great uh, ensemble uh, with them. So uh, you've done very well. I love all the novels. Or Will they be published oh, as hardcovers? Please. People, the readers do expect uh, to, they feel, feel all warm and cozy when they get to the next novel, and it's similar to the last novel, what mm. you say. I try to make them very, very different in locale and everything else. Sure. They're not superheroes, they're not, uh, you know, or, or James Bond or anybody. But I mean, if you look, if you read the Jack Reacher novels, everyone is exactly the same. Yeah. The first 10 minutes, he beats up six guys. In the next yeah. chapter, he beats up 10 guys, and he himself gets knocked on the head. And so I mean, it's the same novel every yeah. time. And people love it. You know, it's familiarity. It's like you're going to see Andy yeah. Hardy. <laughs> you know, you want to see Mickey Rooney as Andy Hardy make a fool of himself. So uh, I, I, I do want to uh, advise our audience that this is really a must read. It, it, you should go there. First of all, you, you can read the other two uh, 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 novels that have been published online uh, yep. there as well. But this one, uh, in addition to having these familiar characters, this unrequited love between the detective and the, uh, the reporter, and you keep that constant, which is, I, I think is right. In other words, the characters are the characters. But in this particular case, you've taken a page uh, from Orson Welles, if I might, in that he was so fascinated with the oh, with uh, Harry Ryan that when the after the movie was out, he did a I think a, a two years worth of radio programs. Uh, he and uh, one of uh, I think Grant Green's uh, 
uh, had a, shared a literary agent, and they found out that the Harry Lyme character was available. So uh, uh, Orson Welles decided to do with uh, the Sky Towers uh, a couple of uh, years worth of radio programs, and I'm uh, actually now searching down uh, copies of them so I can listen to them because I, I love his voice. But uh, you've actually taken a, a page out of his book by making uh, sort of a, like uh, uh, extending the Harry Lyme world. And I, I think it's absolutely fascinating. Thank you. Just about, just about every one of the famous detectives, Bulldog, Grumman, the mm -hmm. Falcon, um, yeah. the Saint, every one of them not only had a TV series or a, or a, a movie series and a TV series, but somebody played them on radio. Um, various actors, um, which was great. I mean, I remember in the 1950s, listening to the old Victrola and uh, the old RCA Victor with my parents uh, to everything from from uh, 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 Lights Out to which is done on on radio to Tarzan and uh, yeah. I mean, and Bob Hope, of course, and uh, on the comedy shows. Sure. I will also say one thing about the book is that. Um, I always base my books on historical fact, like the Vermeer book. There really is a Jan Vermeer, and this is what his paintings look like. In this one, in the first three chapters, there are photos not only of Graham Greene, but Graham Greene when he was young and in MI6, and Kim Philby, um, mm -hmm. and so forth. So you'll see what these people look like, as well as the book jackets and Orson Welles and everything else. Um, um, so, um, yeah, that's what it is. That's what I do for a living. Yep. Well, everybody, you've got to go to johnmariani.com, sign up about, for the but virtual let's not gourmet, leave this and John, you did read, ask, the, uh, read the serial of the novel. Uh, John, you did ask, uh, John, if uh, uh, we could expect these out in hardcover someday. Uh, is that a, a possibility, John? Is what, what did you want? Uh, to have a hard copy? Hard copies have, of these? I'm certainly hoping so. If I do, I'll sell the whole series at once because they publishers like that, especially crime novels. Um, sure. They like to have a whole series. Sure. Like, that's that's the way, um, you know, there's a, a couple of dozen famous uh, crime novel authors that are out doing, I'm reading uh, the, right now the David Wolf series mm -hmm. by uh, Jeff Carson. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all the same. You see the same characters, same locale, mm -hmm. new well, adventures. There's always in Boston. And sure. Elmore and Leonard uh, mixed it up. He, he wrote a couple of books on this, with the same character, but he's always creating just the late uh, Elmore and Leonard, who was the best of them all. Best of them all. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I do not doubt that uh, uh, going after Harry Lyme is going to join another Vermeer and the other novels. In a, in a wonderful series, you're going to be picked up by a publish, publisher very soon. Well, with the kind of publicity you guys are giving it, how could it not? <laughs> so we, we Everybody's got to read it. We again urge our uh, audience, if you want a real treat, uh, not only of uh, uh, written uh, uh, mysteries, uh, to go to johnmariani.com, but also while you're there, you'll be able to look at all the delicious pages of... Uh, of, of food that uh, John yeah. uh, publishes every uh, every month. So thank you very much uh, once again, John. And uh, we look forward to I look forward certainly to the next chapter uh, in the, uh, the the next issue. But I think we're, we're up to about three now. Which I just finished three chapters, and I can't wait for the fourth one. Thank you. I always try to leave you hanging. Yep. <laughs> See you soon. Okay. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.